Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good to see you all. Just a few notices before we begin. Firstly, this Thursday at 11.30, we have a service of midweek communion at St. Kentigan's, followed by from 12 to 1, our soul soup lunch. You are very welcome to join us for all or any of those events. Also on Thursday at 7.30 p.m., the St. Thomas's Vestry will be meeting at Ann Harper's. If there is anything you wish to be raised on the agenda, then please talk to Anne or myself. For those who are on the D-Dong group, we meet next Saturday from 12.30 to 2 at St. Kentigan's in the hall. And just for information, I'm not expecting any of you to come. Next Sunday in St. Kentigan's, we have an extraordinary general meeting to consider the new updated constitution. You are very welcome to attend if that is your thing. Excitement. <laughs> I have such an exciting life at times, don't I? Next Sunday is Matins, so please do come and join us for that. As far as I know, those are all the notices, unless there is anything else. No? Okay. Let's have a moment of quiet before we begin our service. So we stand to sing our first hymn, hymn number 178 in our books, Thy Kingdom Come on Bended Knee, number 178.
So our service begins on page one of your blue books. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We say together the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy by your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love, and we are his children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because he loved us first. So sitting or kneeling, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. and to our fellow members in the body of Christ, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins, and deliver us from the power of evil, for the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. So God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins, Heal and strengthen us by his spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So we stand to say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God and Father, with God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So the collect, the special prayer for today. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of heaven and earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant your peace to our times. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. If you'll please be seated for our readings. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 1 to 4. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought, brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them, light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken, as on the day of Midian. And the epistle is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. This is Paul speaking, of course. Now, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you 
should be in agreement. And there should be no divisions among you, but that you should be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. Um, I did also baptize the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are saved, it is the power of God. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we stand to sing our gradual hymn, hymn number 312, Jesus Calls Us O the Tumult, number 312. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the lake, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, 
Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. If you'd care to be seated. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I start, Warren, could you turn the lights and the heating off, please? Just temporarily. We've still got it on up there, that's fine. What stands out in this church? At this moment in time. The windows. No, you do. Oh, I do. <laughs> okay, apart from me, what else stands out in this church? Candles? The fairy lights are still on? Okay. Do you want to turn them back on again before we all freeze to death? <laughs> Just a personal <laughs> desire not to be too cold. Isn't it bright? One of the most difficult things that I found when I moved up here was how dark it gets in the winter. The dark and the cold and the damp. And I found it difficult to juggle my workload to fit in my daily walk. Now, I need my daily walk because otherwise I get very grumpy. And the darkness dragged me down. This winter has seen particularly hard work. I am tired of shoveling snow and walking on ice, and we have another two months to go. January always feels to me like the longest, darkest month, despite the fact that we are past the shortest day. And it's in this time of year that epiphany tide falls during the winter before spring has arrived and before the days really lengthen and it's good because it reminds us that we live according to a different clock epiphany is a season of light a season of light amidst the darkness it's a season of light that ushers in the daytime. And it's kind of one step ahead of the world. The Old Testament reading today is written to a people who feel they are living in very dark times. It is a time when there is distress and hunger and war. It's a time when they turn away from God and can't find a hint of light. And as you all saw, when things are dark, you focus on different matters. 
It's written to those who have been conquered by the Assyrian king, and the land has been devastated by conflict. People have either fled to safer areas, or they've been carried away into slavery. So those who are left are struggling to scrape a living, and all seems dark. And they have turned away from God in their fear and despair. They are focusing on something else. They can no longer see the light. It's to those people, and people today, who have lost sight of the light, that God is writing through Isaiah. He writes of a day when despair will be no longer, when night will be transformed to day, when those who walk in darkness experience a great light. And he says that this is due to the actions of a person. The light shines because someone, he shall make glorious the way of the sea. Light is not given. The day is not obligated to dawn. It's because of the work of God in this circumstance that light appears, that harvests are fruit of fruitful, that victory is achieved. Verses 3 and 4 of our Old Testament reading describe how the coming of light reverses hunger. It brings people back. It's worth noting that there's no time scale given for this. It's not as though someone clicks their fingers and it happens, or flicks a switch. It's often a gradual dawning of light. Things happen in due time. So much as I might want March and the beginning of spring to appear, I have to hold. And I have to live with the promise of that light. The bringing of the light is dependent on someone, and that someone has to be welcomed and accepted before he can bring light to the darkness. Now, we tend to associate as Christians this passage with Christmas, with the coming of the Messiah, partly due to the fact that we always have it on Christmas Day but partly also to a later passage in Isaiah, one that we had on Epiphany Sunday, where the prophet equates the glory of the Lord with light. They are one and the same. Light and salvation come from God. They are gifts of grace. Sometimes we tend to think that we are entitled to the light and that darkness is a rather inconvenient nuisance. We have done everything humanly possible to conquer the darkness. Candles, electric light bulbs, keeping ourselves occupied during the winter, filling our lives with busyness so that we do not focus on the darkness. And I'm not just on about physical darkness. But the light comes from outside, not inside. We will struggle to create light for ourselves without help. We can only do so fully with the help of God. Epiphany Tide in the middle of winter reminds us that God is the light bringer to our darkness. In the Gospel today, Matthew talks about the early days of Jesus' ministry as the fulfillment of our passage from Isaiah. He demonstrates what it means for the light to come. People's lives are changed as they turn from former paths. They no longer stay with the old ways of being and doing, but build new ways. The good news of the kingdom is proclaimed. Every disease and sickness among the people is cured. People are released from the darkness in which they live into light. Darkness still exists in this world. Yet with the coming of Christ, the new day has dawned. So even if the nights seem long and the days are short, 
know that in the appearance of Christ and in welcome him into our hearts, the light has come. So I encourage you in these dark days of January to live in the light. Amen. So we stand to profess our faith in that God of light in the words of the Creed on page four. We believe in one God. Of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we pray for the Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of the week of prayer for Christian unity, help us to listen to your voice, calling us still to unity in our diversity. We pray for church leaders everywhere that they may work together and promote unity among Christians. Everlasting God, you choose people to send forth as workers into your vineyard the word, world that you trusted us as stewards. You spoke to awaken Samuel with your call, and so we ask you to open the ears of your chosen ones. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Compassionate God, you hear the cries of all who are in trouble or distress. Accept our prayers for those whose lives are being affected by global warming and the climate change throughout the world. Strengthen them in their hour of need. Grant them perseverance and courage to face the future and to be to them a firm foundation on which to build their lives. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Creator God, you called Abraham to be the father of many nations. And so we pray for the nations of our world and their leaders. We continue to pray for peace 
in your world, and especially for those involved in the process of reconciliation and bridge building between peoples, cultures, and nations. Help us wherever and whenever we can in our everyday lives to be instruments of your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Excuse me while I get the book. Father God, you called Moses to be the shepherd who led the Israelites from Egypt. Help us all to be worthy pastors of your flock here in, your ch in our church. We pray for our families, our friends, and our neighbors, and all who are part of our pastoral care here in Aboyne. Let us pray especially for Owen Jenkins, Isabel, Jonathan, Mike, and we can speak out any others who have come to mind. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Loving God, you called the apostles to be ambassadors for Christ and gave them the power to heal. Help us to bring healing by our visits, our care and our prayers that we may strengthen the spirits of those we love, especially in times of sickness or distress. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Merciful God, your son Jesus Christ wept at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. Be with us in our mourning as we pray for all who are coming to the end of their journey here on earth and for all those who have died and now rejoice in the fullness of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Faithful God, we rejoice in the call to belong to the church, to believe in the gospel, and to be united with the successors of your apostles. May we never labor in vain, and so send us out into the coming week, ready to demonstrate our calling in all that we do and say. And we have a special prayer for Ukraine from Archbishop Justin Welby and Archbishop Stephen Cottrell. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. 
Amen. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, and peace. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. Offertory hymn, hymn number 53, omitting verse 4, songs of thankfulness and praise, number 53, omitting verse 4. So we turn in our books to page 18 and Eucharistic Prayer 5. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We pray. To give him praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. You made us. 
or the people of the world and everything that is. You give born among us to be light in our darkness. Lives in us so that we can look at the world with your eyes. One day we will be with you in heaven, but already we laugh with the saints and angels and sing their joyful song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who... Hosanna in the highest. you never forget us or turn away from us even when we fail you you sent your son Jesus who gave his life for us he healed those who were sick cared for those who were poor and cried with those who were sad he forgave sinners and taught us to forgive for all we give you thanks in the way that Jesus on the night before he died while he was having supper with his friends he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. So, the the spirit on us and on the body and blood of Christ, sharing your life, we travel in your our journey's end. Your people, we give you thanks through the Son and in the Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, bearer of our the world, give us your peace. So come, let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us. Feed on him in your hearts by thanksgiving.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endures forever. We say together prayer A on page 21. Father, we have broken the bread, which is Christ's body. We have tasted the wine of his new life. We thank you for these gifts, by which we are made one in him and drawn into that new creation, which is your will for all mankind, through him who died for us and rose again, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you'd like to stand for the blessing. So the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. So we turn to our final hymn, hymn number 135 in your books. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Sorry, number 125 in your books. <laughs>
as usual, tea and coffee available, so do please stay and join us for that. But in the meantime, go in, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.